lot of you guys were wondering about the kick-ass sound design that was in Prism. Well, I'm here with Rob Kreckel, and he was the guy who did all of that. He was the man behind it all. The lasers, all the guns, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, and most of all, the really awesome teleportation sound effect. That was completely awesome, actually. Like, a lot of the sound stuff, I mean, I know when I was showing it to Freddy for the first time, he was like, whoa, those sounds kick ass. Like, he, that was like, that was like the, actually the first thing he pointed out. For the plasma rifle effect, um, what types of sound elements did you combine? Well, the plasma rifle was kind of an interesting challenge because there's like, there's a lot of ways to approach it, right? One is that you start with like real guns and you move from there. The other is to start with like synthetic stuff, like just synthesized static hits mm -hmm. or sine waves modulated, stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I opted to go for the, the real gun. What I did was I took like a basic rifle blast and ran it through a flanger to give it sort of a uh, pitching down like sort of phasey sound mm -hmm. to layer in, which gives it that sort of like laser blast element. Oh, so that's like, right. uh, yeah, going down, I see. So to give it some beef, um, I actually used like an explosion. Oh, nice. And uh, just rolled off all the high end, and so it's just that nice round bottom. Nice, To that's kind really of level cool. everything out. The last element, there was actually two of these, were uh, bullet ricochets, because they add a really cool sort of uh, high-end sizzle element. I'm not gonna lie, I stole the idea from Ben Burt. I've read a bunch of books on how Ben Burt did the sound effects for Star Wars, and uh, you know he's mentioned many times like how he iterated on the blaster, and one of the things he tried was using ricochets, and then did the same sort of trick with the flanger to to just accent that high-end sort of lasery sound that you can get. As far as like using guitar effects or musical instrument effects, mm -hmm. pedals for sound effects, um, one interesting note is that all the voices for the, the guards and troopers in it, basically what I was doing for that is essentially I would record myself for all of them, mm -hmm. with Nico having a cameo or two, and then uh, I would run that through a, a pitch shifter, obviously, bring it down a bit, and then afterwards I would run the whole thing through a guitar amp simulator, yeah. essentially. And it's a very, very, very simple effect, but it's highly effective at giving like this extremely kind of like, you know, present, like radio deep voice. When you heard the lasers in Prism, it was almost like bordering on like painful to hear, but it was like all within the range where you could like comprehend the sound. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty amazing. So like what, like when, when you were making the laser sound effects, what was going into that? That sound was, is a lot simpler than it seems. The other stuff that makes it intense is like the debris that's going on, like the tearing and ripping of the, the yeah. asphalt. When, and then the building, and um, a lot of that stuff is like uh, fire whooshes, um, you know, done with the flanger or uh, some other kind of phase manipulation. I tend to, my personal way of working is I tend to start with the low end element first, and then move to the mid, and then move to the high. Okay. What happens is if you start all those things at once, it just becomes a mess. You don't actually hear the discrete elements. And you take all those elements, and you don't just line them up and say, okay, they all start at the exact same time. You say, okay, well, the, the big boom is gonna start a little bit before everything else, and then um, maybe the real gunshot a little bit after that, and then the laser stuff a little bit after that. It's more of like, you just play with it until it sounds cool. Like, okay. as, as, yeah, of course. as dumb and simple as that sounds, like, that's a lot of sound design is just playing with something until you get this result that you're hearing exactly. in your head. The first thing I do is in my head, I try to imagine what these things sound like. And that's a huge important step that a lot of people miss. They just start designing without actually having a goal in mind. Oh yeah, yeah. It really is extremely helpful to like have a goal in mind. Like even if you just make mouth sound effects of what you might want it to sound like, that can help. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting because like a lot of it is just through kind of experimentation and exploration. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you, you have a vague idea of what you're trying to do ahead of time, but it's like until you do it and take a couple steps back and keep going forward and like, end up with a product that like it, it seems like it was really easy at the end but like before you started you had literally no idea what you're doing like just record stuff and even if you don't think you're going to use it right away you're actually building a mental catalog of all the sounds that you've recorded mm -hmm. and it's a lot easier to go to your mental catalog and say oh I've I just recorded something that might work for whatever you're working on exactly. than it is to like go to a, a, a library that someone else made and 
you have no idea what's actually in there mm -hmm. or how they categorized it or how they described it. Pretty much it's like if you need a sound in your movie and you can't think of where to find it, the best thing is to go find something similar. If it's metal, mm -hmm. just find something else that's metal that's kind of the same size and just, just do it yourself because honestly it sounds just as good. That kind of reminds me of another topic I wanted to touch on which is Foley sound and very similar to what you're saying about like just kind of taking everything that you had at your disposal and recording sounds. That's pretty much how Foley sound works in that sense. It's basically you look through your piece, you find certain elements that need kind of like an extra sound element behind them and just gather them all up and just watch the movie and record sounds into a microphone as you watch it and trying to sync them up as best you can. And I just, you know, made similar movements depending on what I saw on screen. I sat there with a jacket and each time characters moved I would shift it depending on if they needed to make a sound or not. Um, and the same goes for a whole, uh, whole load of other things. There's a difference between sound editing and sound design. Sound design, you are trying to add an emotional content to the sound to help convey the story to the viewer. Sound editing is simply like Foley or, or simple sounds where you're actually you're dragging those sounds and you're just taking them out of the library and putting them in. That's sound mm -hmm. editing. So let's say you're gonna take a gunshot and make that emotional and elevate that to the sound design level. Okay. What is something you, you like? How? What do you want to think about when doing that? Well, you really want to think about a gunshot. What is a gunshot? A gunshot is a pop. But what makes it scary? Is it the fact that it's a pop? No, it's the fact that it's gonna hurt somebody. It's gonna harm someone. So you, what you want to do is you want to like add something in that has that emotion in it, that has that same sort of feeling. Something that's so, pre-existing and like people are already aware of something. Yes. So like what would it be uh, an so example of that? An example of that is like a lion roar or some kind of dog snarl. Like an animal or like even like something natural like thunder for that matter. Or thunder. Mm -hmm. Some kind of sound that is scary to people on a more basic level. Well, thank you for stopping by and uh, explaining all this extremely valuable information to the uh, internets. If you guys have any questions about sound or sound design, you should hit Rob at Twitter. What's your uh, Twitter name? It's at Rob Kreckel. It's uh, yeah, right there. Right there. Perfect. There you go, man. <laughs>